So why healthcare, why dentistry, why pediatric dentistry? There's, there's a, a whole lot built into that question. You can really make a difference in somebody's life if you start with them really young. Someone asked me, you know, what made you get into the restaurant business? I say stupidity. It took us about two years to iron out the deal on this location. It wasn't that easy. Well, my dream to create Lush was based on the fact that a few years ago I had breast cancer and I just knew how I felt and what I went through. So the whole premise of opening this place was to make people feel beautiful. I wanted to uh, do my own thing. I wanted to open up my own place. Crepes sounded like a great idea. People came, they enjoyed it, and we've slowly grown since then. We developed this uh, husk and vine under uh, a couple of different pretenses. We wanted to do shareable plates, uh, sustainable foods. The sun is our main ingredient, you know, in everything that we put out of our kitchen. Pre-coronavirus, it was amazing. We had a buzz in here, people were busy, we had clients up front waiting, people socializing. It's packed, you know, the weekends especially. You know, every night during the week too, uh, we always have something going on here. Late last year, I started hearing about the virus in China. We all read about it and what was going on. We are continuing to follow new developments of the spread of the mysterious coronavirus. But this is a new virus, we don't have a lot of experience with it. I'm declaring a public health emergency of international concern. You hear about things like pandemics or some sort of health crisis the antennas go up. I noticed in the stores, a lot of elderly folks weren't coming around, um, a lot less business. We opened up for just lunch and dinner. Um, it started off very well. And then came the, uh, the shutdown order from the state. Uh, only essential businesses will be functioning. People can work at home, God bless you. you know, I think our last active date was March 14th. You know, at that point, we're already starting to see the patient load come down. It went from here to an all-time low. It was scary. We knew we were coming into times that nobody's ever seen before. Nobody anticipated being closed for this long. So we thought maybe it was a short haul. We were here, you know, two weeks. You know, when the president was saying, okay, 14 days to slow the curve, the governor's then extending it sometime around Easter, then April 30th, then May 15th. And here we are three months later, opening mid-June, and I really did not think that was gonna be how long it was. If I close a week, we are, we're screwed, kind of. I mean, basically, there's no other way to put it. How can we make sure our staff is gonna be safe? If we lay them off, can we make sure they get unemployment? And we kept them on the books with us working for quite some time, but then eventually we said, guys, we have to lay you off. And I will tell you that I did a video presentation to my staff, and that was by far and away the saddest day of my career. How do you look at a group of people who you, you love and you consider family and tell them, I'm really sorry, but we have to let you go? We furloughed from March 15th up until April 30th. I mean, we closed everything down. We really went through a really scary part of not knowing if this, this was even gonna work. I mean, how do you plan, you know, for what to do, how many people to hire, how many people to, to fire? It's just been so long, the battle of not having revenue come in, uh, not paying bills, uh, not being able to uh, know if your next delivery is gonna come in. And every day they would say, check the FAQ and, and see what's changed. And, and I think that a major part of frustration on our part, but this probably speaks volumes for many people, was there hasn't seemed to be one governing body that said, this is exactly how you do things. These are non-essential services. Essential services have to continue to function. Now, I'm not gonna say that we were first-line workers, you know, intubating patients who had COVID in the hospitals, far from it. But we do know that the mouth is critical in, in your overall health. And that was thrown aside. Doesn't matter, who cares? You guys just fill cavities, they can wait. To simply say one person's business is no longer essential without even giving a plan or some sort of financial backing, in my opinion, is not right and not constitutional, so. And God forbid it happens again, maybe we should learn from what is going on now to be able to adjust it for the next time this happens. You look in the future, you can only make an estimated guess, correct? And pretty much all of the so-called experts, their expert guesses have been essentially wrong all the way along. In the beginning, yes, it, it needed to be done. I mean, everything just pretty much shut down overnight. There was no in-between, there was no preparing us for it. Fast forward, do I think now at this point, it's very excessive. I think we know what we have to do to keep coronavirus at bay, so to say. You're not helping us. If you're helping us and you're paying my bills and feeding my children, then we could I could stay home, that's fine. But you're not, I need to work. Because I just don't see without government help how any small business is gonna survive this. What I predict about the future is this should go away. I think it's just going to take time. When you're able to do so, go out. If you have the means, 
get out and resume life. We reopen tomorrow. Um, so we have all the cooks back there cooking. I'm pretty excited. I mean, it, it can only get better, so it's not gonna get worse. I, I, you know, it can only get better from this point. My feeling, my partner's feeling, other people's feeling in, in this industry is, if you made it this far and you made it through the bed, uh, great things you know, will happen with the support of people now coming out. Your local businesses uh, really need your support and they are waiting to welcome you back <laughs> with open arms. It's kind of scary reopening because I know we're not gonna be able to operate at full capacity. But then again, it's also, I'm, I'm excited. I'm looking at it like a new business again.